Today we're set up to uh, verify that the high pass is set correctly, which is very port important for the Quattros, the new Quinto, the Sevens, the Model Fives, and any time you want to know what the actual input impedance is. The manufacturer's stated impedance is often not correct. Not because they don't know how to measure it, but because the industry standard is that that's taken at a thousand hertz. For the passive filter to work, the M5 and the M7 high passes to work, we need to know what the impedance of the circuit is at 100 hertz so we can get a perfect 6 dB per octave transition, 3 dB down at 100 hertz. So what we need for this, we're using a CD player here with a uh, variable output. We have a Bryston, which we're going to verify that its input impedance is correct. You need a voltmeter, digital voltmeter, and it's set to 2 volts AC scale. In this case, it's just a Harbor Freight meter. Always turn the amplifier off when you're making the switch adjustments because it can set send a pulse through your system uh, that would do uh, damage. We have the high pass installed to the input. In this case it's balanced and the input, the, uh, the input, the output from the CD player is going into the input of the filter. First thing we do is play track 27 which is the 1000 Hz track on the uh, Vandertones disc, which is also required to do this. Um, track 27 is 1000 Hz. So what we're going to do is adjust the level of the CD player in this case, but in your case it might be the preamp to where we get an indication as close to 1 volt AC as we can. So let's play track 27, in this case we're on Oh, I forgot to turn the amplifier on, so we turn the amplifier on You can hear, and in this case we have the level control set to where we're reading 1.03. Let's lower that a little bit. Let's go back to track 27. Point nine seven three. Well, we'll go ahead and go up to the one that's uh, one volt. Point oh three one. Steps in the CD player in this case are too large. One point oh three. Now we'll change. Uh, we'll turn the power amp off. We we'll go to the next setting available. We start. We always start this process by setting the switches on the lowest setting available on the cover of the high pass. In the balanced high pass case that's 10K. Now we're going to set the switches for 20K and do the same process again. 20K is switches 1, 8, and 10. Okay, we have switches 1, 8, and 10. Turn the power amp back on. Now we're going to play track 30, which is the 100 hertz. And we get a reading of 0.749. That's very close to 0 0.707, which is our target. So in this case, we know that we need to have this high pass set to the 20k position to give us a 100 hertz high pass which is correct for the quattros and the fives and the sevens using this particular Bryston amplifier. 
Had this voltage not been near 0.7, we would have gone to the next setting up, which would have been 33K. And we keep working our way up the list until we get as close to 0.7 volts as we can. And now we know we have it set as optimally as possible. You would go through this same process, although use different tracks if you're trying to set it up for 80 hertz. In the case of the Kinto, you use the Vander Tones 2 disc, and you use the tracks, again the 1000 hertz tracks is the same, but you use the same process, but in that case you play the track that plays 200 hertz, because the Kinto has the high pass set at 200 hertz and the subwoofers are set at 80 Hz. There's also a tone available for 80 Hz. Same process, you would just use the different tones and the outcome would be the same.